The relationship with monsters is usually a one-way street, that of scarer and scary. But here you have a monster who depends on us, the scared, to sustain their life, their unlife of not really living but not really dead. It's a complicated relationship. Because of course that dependence is on our blood as a means to satisfy their hunger, to allow them to continue hunting us and feeding on us for all of eternity, occasionally when they get bored changing one of us into one of them. But don't get lost in the details, just take a moment to appreciate the reality. Sometimes it's just nice to be needed. Hi, I'm Dan Larson and these are the 10 best vampire action figures. We asked you to tell us what the best vampire action figures of all time were. This list is the result of all the votes cast via our Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and the action figure subreddit. No restrictions were put on the field of figures that voters could submit votes for, but it's clear that most of you already knew that we don't include higher end figures like Hot Toys on these lists because it's just not fair and every single list would end with a Hot Toys piece in the number one spot. Not today, not this list. And before we get started, I just wanted to give a shout out to Chris the one person who submitted a vote for Chicken McNugget dressed as Dracula. It didn't make the list, but I like where your head's at. <laughs> Number 10 is 2016 Four Horsemen Studios Mythic Legion's Carpathius. Part of a 2015 kickstarted campaign, he was officially released in 2016. Carpathius is a roughly six inch scale vampire in armor with all the eye popping sculpt and paint detail that the Four Horsemen and the Mythic Legion's line are known for. With 30 points of articulation, a spear, a sword, a dagger, and parts that are interchangeable with other Mythic Legion's action figures, this is Nosferatu in plate mail armor about to roll natural 20s and clear the field of player characters. Number 9 is 2013 Mattel Batman Unlimited Vampire Batman, aka Batman Batman. This 6 inch scale 2013 Batman figure is based on a series of 1990s Elseworlds stories where Batman was turned into a vampire. Fangs, blood red eyes, wings, and everything. And you know what? Since this figure doesn't really match the style of Kelly Jones' artwork in the comic, we're going to make this spot a twofer by including the 2005 DC Direct Crimson Mist Vampire Batman figure here as well. Same scale, more detailed sculpt and paint apps, but with less articulation than the Mattel offering. You're gonna have to take your pick, which is more important to you. Just how grotesque do you like your Vampire Batman? You have to decide which is more important to you, the look or the posability. Number eight is 2000 Aztec Toys Silent Screamers Graf Orlock the Undead. Graf Orlock, aka Nosferatu, was produced by Aztec Toys, aka Mezco Toys, before they were Mezco Toys, as part of a line of figures pulled from old horror movies that you've probably only seen if you took introduction to film courses in college. Nosferatu, or should I say Nosferatu? Nosferatu, or should I say Nosfernatu? <laughs> that one's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Nosferatu, or should I say, I can't believe it's not Dracula, is the almost Dracula vampire who managed to make his way to the silver screen in 1922 as an unauthorized interpretation of Bram Stoker's Dracula novel, 25 years after the inspiration was published, but nine years before Universal Studios turned actual Dracula into a pop culture icon. Number seven is 2003 Toy Biz Marvel Legends Blade. Based on the Wesley Snipes character from the 1998 and 2002 movies, it's a throwback to the days of crazy high articulation, heavy paint application, and mixed materials in the Legends line. It features an incredibly Wesley Snipes likeness, especially for 2003, a cloth coat, tiny removable sunglasses, a gun, a sword, head tattoos, and even a motorcycle. Hasbro would be very hard pressed to make a better, more comprehensive figure today, 15 years later. Number six is 2007 NECA Player Select Castlevania Dracula, a brilliantly sculpted rendering of the character from the Nintendo series of Castlevania games. He's covered in tiny details and stands closer to the seven or eight inch scale of Marvel Select figures. He's got a giant removable cape, comes packed with accessories, including a bat, and was available in both closed mouth and fangs bared ver versions variations. They won't notice. <laughs> While it's not the most articulated figure on the list, it does have a considerable amount of posability, limited somewhat by the heavy materials of the Captain Morgan coat and high collared cape. Great for fans of the game series or anyone looking for an imposing, blood-sucking monarch to fill out their Halloween shelf. Number five is 1980 Remco Dracula, a throwback to the days of four inch action figures, a throwback to the days of five points of articulation and vinyl capes. He's based on the classic Universal Monsters Bela Lugosi version of Dracula. 
No accessories other than his cape, available in either regular or glow-in-the-dark. What could possibly have this figure ranking so high? You don't have to have 32 points of articulation to be good. You don't have to come with a motorcycle and a bunch of weapons. Sometimes less is more. Sometimes a simple, straightforward, inexpensive when it was released figure can be more endearing than offerings at a much higher price point, and it will connect with a much higher number of collectors, especially if there are no other Dracula offerings available. And for the time, this figure fit in perfectly with the biggest toy line, Kenner's Star Wars. When you can ride the coattails of the biggest name in the game, you don't hesitate. Copy, paste, repeat until someone notices. Number four is 1989 Kenner, the real Ghostbusters, the Dracula monster. Look, it's not the most articulated figure on the list. It's not the best sculpted, most detailed. It doesn't come with any accessories other than a cape. What could possibly have this figure ranking so high? Crossover power. The Ghostbusters were a fan favorite line and the introduction of classic monsters into the line was a brilliant marketing move. Bustin isn't just for ghosts. With a cloth cape and a leg-squeezing action feature that raised his arms and opened his mouth, it's another piece that ended up in nearly every toy collection at the time, and that kind of exposure catapults you ahead of much more expensive, much more elaborate pieces. Number three is 1997 McFarlane Toys Monsters Dracula with Playset. From the very early days of McFarlane Toys, when Todd was just beginning to experiment with licenses outside the Spawn brand and what kinds of markets his toys could compete in, this was a much smaller offering than the six-inch market that had dominated the products released since the company began in 1994. The trade-off for size and articulation was a full diorama, a place at an environment for the character to be displayed with, and the attention to detail that made McFarlane Toys into the industry leader that it was. Dracula had a cloth cape, a coffin, a cemetery gate, and a play gimmick with a quick-change booth that turned him into a giant bat with articulated wings. Look. It's not the most articulated figure on this list, but that is more than made up for by the sheer volume of stuff in the box. Number two is 1993 Playmates Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Don as Dracula. The turtles got to be everything. Sports guys, military dudes, Neanderthals, cowboys, transformers, and in this case, universal monsters. Mike was Frankenstein, Leo was Wolfman, Raph was the mummy, and Don was cast as Dracula. Playmates was willing to try any four-figure theme to move another batch of figures, and history shows that they were right, and that's what people wanted. Literally 15 years later, and Playmates did it again with Raphael taking on the vampire role as opposed to the licensed Dracula name proper. You like turtles. I like turtles. We all like vampires. This is how you make money. This is one way to make money. There are others. I warned you! I tell you! Before we get to number one, a quick honorable mention for figures that got votes but weren't the right kind of vampire to make the list. Sauron from Marvel Legends is technically a psychic vampire. We were looking for traditional blood-sucking. Vampire from Mask is a transforming flying motorcycle that just happens to be called Vampire, so that's not even close. Mind Wipe from Transformers looks like he should be a vampire, but the best I could tell was that he's a hypnotist who dresses like a vampire. Mosquitoor from Masters of the Universe is a mosquito, not a vampire, and lastly, Count Von Count would have been on the list for sure, but he was never actually released since Palisades canceled the Sesame Street line before it was ever actually produced, not existing is immediate disqualification. And at number one is 2016 Hasbro Marvel Legends Morbius. The most popular toy line on the planet delivers the most popular vampire figure of all time. Morbius is a highly articulated six inch scale figure packed with two different capes, one for flying, one for just standing there, both with the requisite super popped collar like all the cool vampires wear. Sometimes a good guy, sometimes a bad guy. It really comes down to your personal beliefs on how and when it's okay for a vampire to drink a human's blood. If it helps, just think of him like Robin Hood, where he's stealing blood from the bad people, but instead of giving it to people in need, just keeping it all for himself. And sometimes he gets confused as to who is bad and who is good, but also, guy's gotta eat, right? You can't hold that against him. Those are the 10 best vampire action figures of all time, some traditional, some not so much. One total knockoff, a spectrum of articulation, Batman, the Ninja Turtles, and Wesley Snipes. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you that already are. If you're in a position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy and join this list of fine, beautiful humans scrolling by right now. It's on this side right. Share this video and let us know in the comments down below what your personal favorite vampire figure is. It's difficult for me to pick one right now. So many of these figures still fresh in my head, but I gotta be honest and say that the one I keep about is that chicken McNugget. What's up with that? I mean, zero points of articulation. It's not even a real piece of chicken. <laughs>